what popular consumer product, is actually a giant ripoff. NFTs was probably the funniest thing, I've ever witnessed. I've been hacked. All my apes gone. Will live in my brain, for the rest of my life. Hey, wanna buy the Mona Lisa for $5,000? Hell yeah. Hands over $5,000. Great. Enjoy your painting. When do I pick it up? Oh, you don't actually own the physical painting, I've just written, that you paid me $5,000 for it, in this notebook, which you can come and look at any time you want. You, the reader, may think this is an exaggeration. It isn't. They paid for links to JPGs, on servers they didn't own, with no guarantees of anything. Magic erasers. Go on Amazon and search for, melamine sponges. They're super cheap, and the exact same thing. Yeah, in bulk they are like, 10 cents per sponge. Hijacking this comment, to tell a quick somewhat related story. Two decades ago, when magic erasers were fairly new, we had a massive house party at the end of high school, at a buddy's house, while his family was out of town. So many people showed up, that we had to call the cops ourselves to clear it. Once his neighbors started to call the landline, non-stop, to get us to shut it down. Needless to say, the house was pretty thrashed, on a surface level. Cut to the next day or two, we rushed to clean it up, in the hope, that we wouldn't be found out, and we employed some magic erasers to clean up all of the scuffs on the walls. Being mostly teenage dudes, we didn't read the instructions, and were attempting to scrub the scuffs off of the walls with the dry sponges. To be fair, we were all the most hungover I think we had ever been, so, we weren't exactly working with a full kit. Somebody had the sense to say, this isn't working, somebody read the effing box, and that's when we found out, that you had to wet them. Once we did that, the walls actually cleaned up quite well, much to our relief. Despite all of our efforts, the one thing that got us caught, was a mostly empty bottle of whiskey, that I had hid behind the sliding glass curtain, that my buddy's family member, found the day after they arrived home. So, I'm the one that effed it up. But, it did give us a quintessential high school house party story of the 2000s, so, I guess it wasn't for nothing. There's definitely a lot more that happened that night, but I'm trying to keep it relevant to the thread. Knife sets, with like 10 different shitty knives in a decorative holder. Just buy one or two nice ones, and take good care of them. You don't need, a special one, for every different kind of food. 1. Chef's knife, default for the vast majority of prep. 2. Bread knife, serrations, are useful for many things. 3. Paring knife. Really all you need to get started for most cuisines. Specialty knives should come later in the process, after you've discovered the need for one. Diamonds. They're not super rare. It's all a marketing ploy, to get your money. Hell, you can walk into the middle of a park, in Arkansas, for $13 and find one. And lab-grown diamonds are just as good, if not better quality. Absolutely this. False scarcity, a truly horrible history, and engagement rings, are literally just the result of an American marketing campaign. Sorry, but if you really want a diamond engagement ring, and can't accept a lab-grown one, we probably have, very different worldviews. Kitchen sinks. There are a lot of sinks that cost $1,000 or even more. It's a effing metal bowl, with a hole in it. They cost less than $100 to manufacture in China, and ship it halfway across the world, but high-end companies, upcharge these things 10 times the price. Source, used to work for a company, that bought these sinks for $90 a pop, shipped to us and we were selling them for $1,000. Edit, since a lot of people are mentioning these, must be American prices, let me clarify, you can get a sink for a couple hundred dollars at Home Depot, or some big box store. These are the luxury sinks you can buy at higher end retailers. Their argument is, the stainless is thicker, so, it's more durable. Never heard of a sink breaking, but people are gullible. Wow, they're everything, and the kitchen sink in this thread. Also never buy faucets, sinks, etc. from your plumber. We were renovating, and the plumbers left us a catalog. We cross-referenced it with an online hardware store, and found out, the plumbers were charging more than triple the amount it cost at the store. Same for electrician supplies. My father-in-law is an electrician, but he's retired and doesn't have a license. He was renovating his garage and had an electrician come over to install some stuff, and found out he was missing one light switch, he'd forgotten to buy. The electrician told him, he'd charge him $100 for the switch and installation. He replied, how about, I bike to the store 
buy a switch for $3 and install it myself, while you get the rest of the day off. He agreed, lol. Herbalife. Nutrition shops. Those shakes, are just Herbalife. I once didn't know what Herbalife was, and almost bought into the great stories. Immediately noped out of there, when the sales guy told me, to phone some friends and family on the spot, so I could sell to them, and become a member, too. The moment you find it, it's not a pyramid scheme, is the moment, to nope out. F Ticketmaster. How the hell, does an electronic ticket, require a 15% service fee? Insane that they are charging me, to print my own ticket. I live next to a venue. It is cheaper for me to go to the ticket window, and have an employee process my transaction, and print me a physical ticket, than it is to purchase online, and use the app. How? Fabric softener. Every authority I've seen, agrees, that it's bad for your clothes, and your washer. It makes towels softer, but crucially less absorbent, the one thing, you want a towel to be. It basically puts a very thin layer of wax, to mimic softness on your clothes, but it makes your washer gunky, and the fibers in your clothes, deteriorate faster. Also, those weird scent beads, that people use to now, in their wash. Printer ink cartridges. Companies charge insane markups, and use shady tricks, to make you buy more. Total scam considering, how cheap the actual ink costs, to produce. That's why, you buy a laser printer, and buy third-party toners. That's why, you print your stuff, at the office's printer. Dr. Dre, does not have a degree in headphones. Ironically, Dr. Dre isn't even involved, anymore, Apple is cannibalizing Beats sales, by pushing, the AirPods line, and Beats is putting out, cheaper products. And yet Beats actually has some decent products now. Their sport earbuds are competitive, at that price range. The wireless headphones don't sound great, but they're nowhere near as crappy, as the wired ones, and work great within an Apple ecosystem. I still wouldn't exactly recommend them, unless you wanted to have wireless headphones, that can seamlessly switch between iPhone and Apple TV, or you can't afford better wireless buds. Huge pickup trucks, that are used as commuter cars, and never for their intended purpose. I live in effing Newport Beach, California. The amount of people, with souped up pickup trucks, that have never seen a single day of hauling anything, is unreal. Uck, so agree. I live in middle GA. The amount of stupid ass trucks, and honestly, even what people do to nice sports cars, lift kits, and too large of tires, is absolutely insane. Most people who drive the nice trucks, don't use them, except to ride your ass. Yee yee trucks, are what I call them. Keurig slash K-Cups. Seriously, you can make single or smaller servings of coffee, in any coffee maker. Just fill your cup with water, and pour that amount, into the machine. Follow the coffee bag directions, to approximate how much coffee to add. It's not rocket science, and you don't need to contribute to more unnecessary waste. As a compromise, you can also get a reusable cup, or filter, that lets you put in whatever coffee you want. Even the guy, Keurig, regretted inventing it, from an ecological standpoint, not a financial one. Timeshares. If you go to real estate buy or sell websites in an area, where timeshares exist, and sort the search from lowest to highest priced properties, you'll see a bunch of timeshares, listed for zero dollars. That is because, a lot of people regretted buying them, but are stuck in a nearly impossible to get out of contract, which requires them to pay crazy high maintenance and other fees, every year. They are so high, that you are better off renting a hotel room in the area every year, for the same amount of time, as you are allowed to stay in your timeshare. They are a scam, and should be outlawed, or at least, people who buy them should be able to get out of contract, by officially abandoning them. Crazy high maintenance and other fees, every year. My siblings and I, inherited a number of week-long Marriott timeshares, about a decade ago, and the cost to keep them would have been absurd. You owe annual fees, regardless of whether you use the timeshare, plus usage fees, when you actually do use it, and these add up to more than it would cost, to just book the damn hotel independently. That's on top of the purchase price, these had been $50,000 each, and some were not paid off yet, and extra costs for things, like cleaning, if you want service during the stay, when that would be provided daily, and included in the rate, if you booked it as a hotel. Abandoning them, turned out to be, the most cost-effective solution. Marriott offered to buy them back, at something like 8%, of the purchase price, but that would have required us, to open probate in each state, 
where the relevant timeshares sat and cost more than the buyback price. So, we disclaimed interest in, and walked away, from what was in aggregate, the single most costly asset in the estate. Don't buy timeshares, folks. Any compression sleeves, with copper, or magnets, in them. The compression is fine. But the copper, or magnets, do nothing. Hey now. The copper doesn't do nothing. It stains my skin green. My dad would wear copper bracelets. When I was in kindergarten, I noticed his wrist was green, and exclaimed so very sincerely. He told me, his alien skin was showing, and I was half alien, and that I shouldn't tell my mom. I thought I was half alien for a while, during my childhood. Thanks dad. Emergency sea, airborne, stuff like that. I don't care, if it was designed by a school teacher, there's still a reason why, it's a dietary supplement, and its claims, haven't been evaluated by the FDA. Also, no offense to school teachers, but, designed by a school teacher, isn't really what I'd look for, in health supplements. No hate, both of my parents, are school teachers. Haven't been evaluated by the FDA. No no, friend, it's worse than that. FDA is expressly forbidden, from evaluating the claims of a dietary supplement. It's written into the statute, that created the dietary supplement category, DSHEA. FDA can only pursue action, if the supplement makes, what is called, a structure or function claim, that is, a claim that, the supplement changes the structure, or function of your body. This is why, they use weasel language, like, supports immune health, or enhances male vitality. Saying, makes your D hard, would be a function claim, and FDA, would then require evidence, of that claim. Source, I used to write FDA warning letters for a living, and this section was the most infuriating part, of my food and drug, law class. DoorDash is pretty effed up. I paid $30, for a sub sandwich today. Edit, I don't have a vehicle at the moment, and I work from home. My hunger, got the best of me. I only order Chinese takeout from my local place, because they still employ delivery drivers. Old school place. Counter, kid in the corner doing homework, four chairs, that I think, they stole from a local office. Best goddamned, Mugu Gai Pan. This huge trend, of spending lots of money on skincare. There are very few active ingredients that have a visible effect on skin, and they can be bought very cheaply. Most skincare, is actually a scam. Also, most supplements don't actually do anything. Was stupid this weekend, and ended up sunburned. So, I've been moisturizing like mad, and aside from being red, my skin looks amazing. Moisturizing is no joke. Also, all active ingredients, take months to show a noticeable difference, so, people give up on their $100 face cream, before it even has time to make a difference, or because it costs so much, they use so little it does nothing. Buy the drugstore versions instead, the ones with proven active ingredients, that way you can buy enough to apply generously, for as long as you need to. Oh, and remember a nice wide brimmed hat and a long sleeve shirt, are also sunscreen, and don't expire. Designer eyeglasses. Luxotica is a monopoly, that controls most of the market, and commands a premium for cheap, plastic glasses. Don't forget that they also control, most of the places to buy said glasses. They own Sunglass Hut, Lens Crafters, iMed, Pearl Vision, Target Optical, Sears Optical, and Glasses.com. Health Insurance. That's not a popular consumer pro. Yes it is. And that's part of, why it's so effing dumb, that it's private, and we just live with it being a ripoff. Yep. We pay for insurance. And then pay about 33% of our taxes go to healthcare, anyway, 14% Medicare, 5% VA, 14% Medicaid, and other government healthcare spending. Guess how much first world governments, who pay for entirety of healthcare spend on healthcare in other countries? about 30 to 35 percent of their budget pretty much same as us it's insane how much more we pay to get about same outcomes america pretty much subsidizes medical r d for the rest of the world i looked at our healthcare statement at how much my spouse's employer spends on healthcare coverage for our family 42 percent of my spouse's salary for the employer portion and we still have to pay into it how are employers not seeing medicare for all as a benefit sure we wouldn't be tethered to a job for healthcare, but then they save so much, they could increase salaries for employees, and keep them there. Wait, that seemed like some pro-employee logic, 
which just does not stand in the US. Video game controllers. They used to build them almost indestructible, but now they all have a broken button or joystick, after less than a year of normal usage, and the occasional drop on the floor, something that just 10 to 15 years ago, would be more likely, to damage your floor, than the controller. I have PS1 controllers, that I'm pretty sure I could kill a water buffalo with, and I still could F sweet tooth shit up in twisted metal, afterwards. There's no reason, to buy brand name drugs. Tylenol doesn't work any better than generic, acetaminophen, but it sure as hell, costs twice as much. Same thing with Advil, Ibuprofen, Pepto-Bismol, Bismuth Subsalicylate, Claritin, Loratadine, and many more. As long as you buy the same dosage, it's gonna work the same. I'm going to say, yes and no. What you don't realize is, that most of these products, have secondary products inside them to deliver the medicine. So, generic acetaminophen, can be made with secondary products, that can cause an allergic reaction, compared to say Tylenol. Same thing with Motrin, and any other brand name products. For the general population, you're absolutely correct. But for people like my wife, where Motrin can be taken with adverse effects, but the moment she takes generic ibuprofen, she immediately has an asthma attack. Home extended warranties, such as American Home Shield, AHS. Assuming they don't manage to weasel out of covering, every single thing that breaks, you're going to pay thousands and thousands of dollars, to have random lowest bidder contractors, come break more things, to install lowest bidder used, junkyard parts, and fell off the truck, specials. Save your money every month, and set it aside for emergencies, instead of sending it to these types of predatory asshats. You can get much better contractors, installing much better products, with much better factory warranties, for much cheaper. The same applies to Car Shield, American Auto Shield, and other heavily advertised automotive extended warranties. I've been in the automotive service business, for 20 plus years, and Car Shield is the only extended warranty, we've had to outright ban from our shop. My heart breaks a little, every time I see someone, pay $4,000 plus, for a contract that's not worth the paper it's printed on, when Car Shield refuses to pay for covered items, because reasons. ETA, see my experiences in my reply to one comment. Also, it's odd, how people seem to either swear that AHS and other companies are either a lifesaver and a great value, or a terrible company and a ripoff. There doesn't seem to be a middle ground here, either, really good, or really bad. Most warranties and product protection plans. Especially, if the product comes with a year warranty, from the manufacturer. I used to get the product replacement plan on consoles at GameStop, until they recently changed the plan, from getting a brand new console, to getting a used one. And when I say, used, I don't mean refurbished, I mean, they went into the back, and gave me one, that somebody else recently traded in. I triple checked, that the one they gave me was okay, before I left the store, but when they asked me, if I wanted to pay the $40, for a replacement plan, on the used one they just gave me, I told them, next time I have an issue with my console, I'll just buy a brand new one, and it won't be from here. Any detox products. They're all scams. Every single one. You have two things, that are fantastic at detoxing your body, your kidneys and liver. Detox products are great for cleaning out your wallet, and that's it. Doesn't matter if it's a, drink, pills, pads for your feet, etc. Do not buy these. Save your money. But how else, will I clean the toxins out of my intestines, if I can't put stickers on my feet? Drink water, eat some blueberries and kale. The secret to detoxifying, is not to put any toxins into yourself, your body will do the work, nutrients in healthy food, will make it easier for your body, to do the work. Any product with the label wedding, such as, wedding dresses, cakes, and decorations, often have a higher price, simply because, of the association with weddings. It's the same with babies. Obviously, there are some things that you really need, that are baby specific, clothes, diapers, but there's so much marketing, in a lot of baby slash kids products, to make the parent feel like, they have to get the best for their child. Hi, I'm a seamstress, and I do wedding gowns. Why do the alterations cost, so freaking much? Two reasons. First, I, like most women, understand that this dress, is the dress. The dress you dreamed about, the dress you are wearing for the most important day of your life, the dress you will look at in photos for the next 50 years. So, I take my time. I am aware, of every pull and tuck and bead. 
but it just needs hemming, except that there's a lot of sequins that will need trimmed off or moved, and that must be done by hand. Crepe is not a forgiving fabric, previous stitches will show, and be very obvious. Second, the bride, and mother of the bride. I understand you are stressed. I take great pride, in taking one stressor off your plate. But lordly, do they have some crazy requests and expectations. You're a size 16, no matter what I do, you will not look like a size 4 in this dress. We can add lace, but you will be paying for me, to do a lot of sewing, and probably most of it by hand. No, I refuse to dye the dress. So, yeah, a little insight, to the wedding dress alterations, business. Telescope enthusiast here. The scopes you see on a shelf in a store, are almost exclusively garbage. Research it a little, and buy online. Do not buy that scope, you saw at Costco. If you really want one of those crappy scopes, go on Facebook Marketplace, and you'll find people basically giving them away, and for good reason. While I agree with you, there is value in these lower quality scopes for beginners. Whether they don't have the money, or aren't sure how devoted to their hobby they'll get, a cheap scope, might be just enough to help decide, how they'd like to progress, or not. Obviously, don't expect much from the cheap telescopes, though. It's just like learning guitar. Most people don't start on a Les Paul, or Telecaster, they'll learn the basics on something much cheaper, and upgrade later. Swiffer anything. One or two swipes, then, they just push the dust around. Toss the pad, and it's in the landfill forever, they're not, biodegradable. Better off getting a microfiber duster, that works much better, and can be washed, and reused many dozens of times. I bought the Swiffer sweeper, and just tuck a damp microfiber cloth around it, instead of the Swiffer cloth. The base product is fine. They're really useful for cleaning walls too. I like to freshen the walls and ceiling up, about once a month, keeps the house really fresh. Amazing how a rectangle on a pole, is so useful. Stanley Cup. Bite your tongue. Every player in the NHL, plays their heart out, for the opportunity of their respective team, to go home with Lord Stanley's Cup. Stanley makes a great product. I've got a Stanley Thermos, yes, I know Thermos is a brand, but I'm calling it a Thermos, anyway, that is sturdy, and keeps stuff hot for ages. I'd totally buy another one, except for the fact, that I think I'll literally have this one, until I die. They're a great brand. What's dumb is, people fighting over a cup at Target, or paying a ridiculous markup for it, on eBay. It may be a quality product, but it's still, just a cup. Starbucks, or any other equivalent coffee shop. Edit, I'll add too, that for the first 40 plus years of my life, I hated coffee. And by that I mean, I could only handle coffee type drinks, if they were filled with, sugar, or syrup, or etc. Then I tried some black, from locally sourced beans, and I loved it. And anytime, I try to have anything black from the coffee chains, it's disgusting. Starbucks is a nice treat every blue moon, but I don't know how people afford it, every day. One thing that makes me proud to be Australian, is the fact, Starbucks tried to set up here, and we, as a nation, said, F that noise, and they all closed, quicker than they opened up. I think, there's a handful spread across Sydney and Melbourne, but they're only there for tourists, who've never had, a decent coffee. Pre-cut fruit. It's usually not fresh, and is so overpriced. This is one of those things, I'm actually okay with, paying more for less. If I buy a whole watermelon, the odds of me taking the time to cut it up and eat it, when I'm hungry, instead of just grabbing a box of crackers instead, are pretty low. But if I have it already cut? Game on. I'm basically, paying for my laziness and desire, to eat fruit. This is one of those things, where it seems lazy, but it's actually an accessibility thing. I had a back injury, fortunately improving, that made it impossible to stand for more than a few minutes, and difficult to sit upright for long. That meant, cooking was nearly impossible. But if I could buy pre-cut veggies, put them on a sheet pan with a protein, I could actually eat nutritious meals, that were still cheaper than takeout. They're also really helpful, for people with executive dysfunction. It can be hard to remember, to eat fresh fruit and veggies. If you open your fridge, and there's a bowl of cubed melon in front of you, then you're more likely to eat them. Sometimes getting a cutting board, knife, and bowl, then washing all those items, makes it overwhelming, and therefore not worth it to eat the cantaloupe. Internet service. Can't live without it these days, and in many places, including where I live, it's a monopoly. 
I have no choice of providers, and they can charge me whatever the hell they want to. No government regulation at all, and these efforts spend big money on lobbying and campaign contributions to keep things that way. F and tech these days, dude. Literally built to deteriorate, so you'll replace it sooner. My iPhone's on its last legs, and I'm so pissed, because I've had phones last twice as long, no sweat. And the shit, like removing headphones jacks, so you'll buy AirPods, or using an obscure type of jack, so that you have to either buy their specific name brand products, or a special adapter. Video game controllers, drift and cost so much more, to be so much flimsier. Games are released unfinished, but still cost over $60. It keeps going, and it's gonna keep going.